there they are. Hey, glad you could join me tonight. Bill Boshears, you caught me. I was just going over uh, the great uh, Zabruder film hoax, and my guest tonight's online. Oh, there he is. Uh, Jim Fisher, how are you tonight, sir? Oh, just great, Bill. I'm real glad to be back. Hey, you know, tonight, and you made mention of it to me earlier, this is the 45th observance of President Kennedy's murder. That's right. Now, I got to tell you something. I love to, I like to read to start with, but Jim, you put some you you put stuff in this book I've never seen before. Oh, terrific! Uh, I mean, and I, and I hey, I don't get to read all the time, but if you really want to understand the Zabruder film, you got to read this book. It'll explain to you why the hoax went down the way it did, and what really actually happened with it. And all of it is fact. See. A lot of people put books together and they make up an innuendo. That's based on fact. See, you can all, and as Jim explained, Jim, you explained that last week as uh, the guy caught uh, the car lights blinking back and forth, left and right, left and right, and it didn't match the sequence. Right. It's the little things like that 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 operation never quite got around to they, there were so many details, they couldn't catch them all. That's right. They couldn't cover it all up. And thank God for people like Jim Fitzer and all the other thousands and thousands of people out there who took time and has spent their lives researching. Jim has three books, The Assassination Science, Murder in Daily Plaza, and The Great Zapruder, Zapruder Film Hoax, all of them available on Amazon.com. Is that right, Jim? That's right. That's right, Bill. I want to get back to what we were discussing last week. Uh, and by the way, if you want to jump in, we're going to do about a half hour of this tonight. If you've got a question for Jim, please jump in. 381-3838, and it's 513 is the area code. We've talked a little bit last week about uh, the uh, Zapruder, not Zapruder, we did talk about the Zapruder film. We talked a little bit about Oswald and that uh, Manlicker Carcano rifle. Right. And the fact that it really wasn't, it was a piece of junk and yes. still is. Yes. Um, the people that we usually, we have one, not here at the station, but one of our friends here, uh, the manager has one. It is a piece of junk. It is. It was known as the humanitarian <laughs> rifle during World War II for never actually hurting anyone on purpose. So, so, I, a guy gets shot in the foot with it or something. <laughs> now, <laughs> now <laughs> what you got to understand, folks, once you see this happening in the books and you get familiar with it, and as you come through history, Jim has done this over and over and over again. Here's the deal. Here's what really went down. They tried to do the same, the, not the same thing, but a kind of the same thing. And I'm going to ask Jim, even though we're talking about uh, Kennedy tonight, Jim, did you see a similarity between this, the Oklahoma City bombing, and 9-11? Uh, yes, Bill, absolutely. I mean, Oklahoma City was ridiculous. You couldn't get those effects on that massive building from a fertilizer bomb outside the building. Most of that energy would have been dissipated by following the path of least resistance outward and away from the building. Plus, you know, uh, there were firemen on the scene who were bringing out unexploded uh, bombs. They brought from out three. The building. Hell, they brought out three bombs, didn't they? Yeah. And but but that all went unasked and unquestioned. And there were two seismic recordings there. In other words, there are two explosions. Exactly. One was the fertilizer bomb and the other was the real deal. Now we got uh, the same thing with the um, the buildings in New York City. We got two seismic events that were measured by the university. That's right, Bill. It's <laughs> fascinating. Those seismic events actually for, from explosions in the basement there of the two buildings that, that occurred before the radar data says the planes hit the buildings. See, that that's the kind of stuff that... Uh, <clears throat> nobody got to ask at the 9-11 Commission. Nobody, nobody asked anything about that. It's Plus, the, the alleged <laughs> fires didn't burn long enough or hot enough to cause the steel to weaken, much less melt. It, it's without a doubt. And, and then my next question is, and I, I kind of hate to ask this, but it's, it's near the end of term, so it don't matter. Do you think, 
in your heart of hearts, just off the top of your head, and I've asked this of the rest of the audience who are watching tonight, do you think that George Bush knew about the 9-11 incident, or do you think when he was sitting there in Texas reading that book with that little girl, he went whole to himself, he said, holy crap, they did it. Well, he, he had to know, Bill, and here's one proof that he knew. He, he a couple of times said when he saw the plane hit the first building, he said, man, that's a really bad pilot. But when the plane hit the first tower, nobody was expecting it. And there's certainly, he said he saw it on television. The only way he could have seen it on television is if the Secret Service had a special private channel set up so he could watch it. He was somewhere in transit or something, wasn't he? Yeah, it was just before he came into the building, the elementary school. He said, you know, he saw the plane hit the building. He repeated it. And, the, it's, it, you know, and he said the television was on, obviously, but what he didn't think about was n no one's television was recording that. But I still see him sitting there with that deer in the headlight look. Yeah. I mean, I'm caught. My pants are down. I'm caught. Right. And what the hell do I do now kind of look. Right. Well, you know, he, he wasn't all that confident of himself, and he knew he had a role to play, but he wasn't quite sure he could pull it off. Uh, and Cheney going, well, yeah, the order still stands. Well, Ch right. Cheney's in the, in, the, in, the, in the basement beneath the White House, and he's controlling all these uh, terror drills that are keeping the Air Force from responding to the alleged reports of hijacking. Let, let's just tell it like it is. He was hiding. He was actually controlling the whole operation, I believe, Bill, actually. I, you know, I, have, I, I agree with you totally. Let's yeah. go to the phone lines. Frank, you're there, sir. Go ahead. You're on line with Jim Fitzer. Go ahead, sir. How are you doing, Mr. Fitzer? Glad Good, to hear Frank. You. Thanks. Right. Um, I have two quick things about the JFK thing. Yeah. One thing is when I was young in sixth grade, a teacher told me that the shot was actually meant for his wife. But like you guys said, it was that gun. And it, and it hit Kennedy instead of his wife. What a teacher told me. And the second thing about that I've read up on while the real reason why Kennedy was shot was because he was going to basically do away with the Federal Reserve and allow our government to print out our own money interest-free, therefore freeing us up of the debt that we're in. Yeah, he'd already begun doing that, actually. He'd already instructed the Department of Treasury yes, to print yes. millions of uh, dollars as United States notes. I remember as a young Marine Corps officer, I held one of them in my hand. And it looked wow. so different because it had a red Im embossed imprint instead of a green one, and it said United States notes. So you're absolutely right about that, that he was going to wow. reform or abolish the Fed was a major motive for killing him. There were lots of others, but that was an important one. Uh, right. And about Jackie, no, the situation was like the opposite. They wanted to make sure Jackie was not harmed, and in fact it may be the reason why a shot from the side from the grassy knoll missed is because the shooter realized that if he fired it, he was going to hurt Jackie too. Okay, one more question about when you can't say yeah. about the hoaxes and everything, and I'm going to go. Um, one thing I want to let America know, we have all the pictures on the Time magazines. Where is the plane that hit the Pentagon? Yeah. We, we do not see any debris. Yeah, any yeah. Debris. No Boeing 757 hit the Pentagon. You're absolutely right. <laughs> Pilots for 9-11 Truth actually got a black box from the right. National Transportation Safety Board that they insisted came from Flight 77. And when the pilots studied it, they discovered that the plane came in from a different direction. It was too high to hit any of the lampposts. Right. When it was a second from the building, it, 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 it was 100 feet. It swooped over it. I got a friend who had a buddy who was a trucker who saw just that happen. The plane flew right at the building and then swooped wow. over it. About the same time, a much smaller aircraft was approaching the building and appears to have fired a missile that was intended to take out a group of budget experts, accountants, and Wow. And uh, financial analysts who were trying to track the $2.3 trillion that Donald Rumsfeld had reported was missing wow. from the Pentagon budget. The hey, day hey, hey, Frank, I'll tell you what. If somebody in, from the Pentagon or anybody else can do this, can explain to me how you put a 757 in a 16-foot hole, I'll be exactly. willing to buy all of it. <laughs> hey, Frank, exactly. thanks so much. Appreciate the Thank call, sir. Guys. We'll take a pause in action. My guest is Jim Fitzer. We'll be right here when you get back. Stick around. We've got more to do, and you're a part of it tonight. 381 3838 is the number, area code 513. Join me.
Back in the side zone, Bill Boshear is joining me tonight. It's Jim Fitzer uh, online. And, uh, Jim, you're there, I guess. I sure am, Bill. Let's go right back to the phone. Let's go to Don. You're there, sir. Go ahead, Jim. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, Jim, you're a qualified person. I wish to ask this question, too. Sure. Okay, I was in Vietnam for two and a quarter years. I got to go with a crew looking for a missing B-52, which I saw shot down with a SAM missile. Okay. Now, it was at 30-some-odd thousand feet. It went straight down with a load of bombs, right? When it blew up, there was pieces. When we finally found a site, pieces all over the place. Now, the jet that went down to Pennsylvania, if you notice in pictures, there was nothing left. Yes. Nothing. They found No, them. you're absolutely right. I mean... I got an Air Force colonel who was an uh, expert in air crash investigations, told me it looked to him like somebody had taken a bulldozer out there, dug a ditch, filled it with trash, and exactly. blown it up. Uh, they found an engine 14 miles away from the crash site. Yeah. They found papers. They found mail and mail bags miles from the website. They shot that plane down. As a matter of fact, they gave the guy who shot it down a medal from uh, Nebraska Air National Guard or something. Jim, North help Dakota. me. Well, let me ask you one more question. Go ahead, sir. The, the, the steel girders. Okay, now, what's 9-11 was a crime scene. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. What happened to the steel girders? Now, well, that's, we that's... get mixed reports on that. Some claim a lot of them were put aboard ship and sent off to China. We do know that the National Institute of Standards and Technology studied samples of 236 of the steel girders, and they found that 233 had not been exposed to temperatures above 500 degrees, right. and the other three not above 1,200 degrees, and yet steel doesn't melt until it hits 2,800 degrees. Uh, 500 degrees is the temperature of an ordinary office fire. If an ordinary office fire could bring down a building, we'd have buildings collapsing all the time. Well, I knew a truck driver was hauling that away to a specific site, and he said every time they get it to the site, it disappeared. He said he saw some of those. Now, I can't remember the name of the cord that they would wrap around steel, and it burned super fast, and it's just like a, a bud saw going through wood. And he said he saw that in several of the pieces and thought, darn, that's awful funny, you know? That they, and then they were destroying the, the steel beams. At, was this at Kills? Uh, Please? Fresh Kills. There's a place called Fresh Kills. It's a big dumping ground. Yeah, exactly. And he said he saw them beams, and he, said, and he too was in Vietnam. Remember, I keep thinking it was cordite or something like cordite, that. Cordite, that's what it is. I was and, trying to think of it. Yeah, it's right, cordite. Right, it cuts it so fast, and he said, then it was gone. Cordite or thermite, maybe. Thermite. Maybe thermite. It could have been. It's been so long. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. No, that's very interesting. No, I'm, I'm, I find that quite fascinating. I'm glad you told me. Thank hey, you, sir. Have a, good, have a good one, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you, Don. Wrong. You know, uh, Jim, as you travel around the country and lecture and tour, and uh, you've been doing this for a number of years, you must, come, you must come across people just like Don, who says, hey, I was standing so-and-so. And they've got all kinds of stories. If, yeah. people, if people want to get a hold of you to give you that story, how do they do that? Would you be interested in sure, it? Sure, sure, sure. Just go to 911scholars.org, 911scholars.org, and right at the top it says contact us, and it has my email address and my phone number. Wow, good enough, good enough. Let's go back to the phone. Let's go to Markle, I think, here. Markle, you're on the air. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I was just totally relieved with what was going on with what you guys were saying about the 9/11, uh, 747, and such. Um, I heard recently in the online news with the CDC and a pretty much polygraph caskets that have been being made for a while, just being made by the bottom of Atlanta's uh, airport. And, it, you know, they've just been sitting there waiting. And I was just, you know, wondering what, if you guys heard anything about that. Have not heard a thing about it, but go ahead, Jim. No, I don't know about that either, Bill. All Thanks. right. Appreciate it, Mark. Appreciate it. Uh, Jim, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you, let's go to the phone. I'll get Ricky on here, and then we'll 381-3838, and I'll come back to my question. Ricky, yeah. you're on the air with Jim. Go ahead. Hello, Ricky. Uh, yeah. Ricky? Oh, I was just had a question like... Yeah, I know. Uh, it's, it's hard, Jim, and I apologize. Some no of the, problem, uh, Bill. Uh, Jim, when we look at this situation, we've looked at it through your books and interviews with you and with hundreds and hundreds of other people. What? I mean, the main consensus is there's something going on in this country that's not right. Yes. 
And it's got to do with the mainstream media being infiltrated yeah, by the intelligence absolutely. agency. Absolutely. The, and, and I'm afraid that we're going to get to a place where people go, oh, well, I, you know, I don't, we've already there. Let me tell you why I know we're there. Hell, half the people that are bitching and moaning don't even vote. Yeah, we had a good turnout this year, but I mean, it was an unusual situation with, uh, you know, lots of, uh, lots at stake and, and Obama versus McCain. It was pretty fascinating this year. But. And it's still, hey, and there are more people jumping on that bandwagon that are asking for his birth certificate. Have you heard that? Yeah, I know all about that. I, I'm, I'm really uh, uh, kind of upset about it. I mean, after this magnificent campaign, the guy's the right guy for the job. Frankly, I don't personally care where he was born. Uh, it don't make a hell of a lot of difference, does it? Anyway, uh, not, not to his competence. I mean, I think this man is too important to this country. I heard him. I heard his uh, news conference, and I felt like for the first time in eight years, I'd been talked to by somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. We've had eight years of incompetence and corruption, Bill, and it's completely disgusting. These people belong in prison, and the idea that they're going to continue in office for you know another another two months or whatever is just uh, awful. It makes me very worried. Let's go to Willis. Willis, you're on the air with Jim Fitzgerald. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Didn't they use that uh, steel that uh, they built the Liberty, U.S. Liberty, New York ship? I think, yeah. so, I think some of it they did, yeah. That's yeah. right. They did. That's yeah. right. That's a good point. Good yeah, point, yeah, Willis. The steel was used up. to build a new, uh, a new ship, yes. Yeah. I'm sure. glad, Mr. Bo Seals, that you finally come around that you know that Barack Obama is going to do a good job. Because well, <laughs> once you go black, you don't go back. You know? uh, okay, okay. Well, I, I'm waiting on him to turn black. He's not black. No, but once you go black, you don't go black. We, we you, got it. You uh, okay, black, yeah. I got you. Appreciate yeah. it. Brother. Let's go to Tom. Tom, you're there with Jim Fitzgerald. Go ahead. Bring you sit in the car. Yes, hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, hello. Uh, about the uh, 9 11 cover up, whatever. Uh, have you guys seen the movie Zeitgeist? Yes, yes. Zeitgeist, good. Yes, have you seen the second one after that? Uh, I know there's a revolver oh. new version. I don't know that I've seen it yet. I've been count I'm supposed to look at it. I don't think I've seen it yet, no. Well, the second one is out. It's free. It's also the first one. Yeah. But uh, it's also very good. And yeah. pretty much you know about the cartel. Right, right. If you go to 911scholars.org, there, there, you'll find a, a list of recommended DVDs about 9-11. There's a lot of good stuff out there. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I'm interested in um, what you do and your, uh, the group of people that you've surrounded yourself with. You have put together some of the, best, the finest names in research that are out there. Uh, and you guys are doing this out of your own pocket. Yeah, that's right. See, that, that's the difference in this country than any other country on earth. You can do that. I just hope that we're not reaching a place that we're not going to be able to do that because of monetary or situations politically. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really scared uh, about our abilities yeah, well, we got to hope they don't crack down on the Internet, you know, that there's enough support in Congress to keep that from happening, because that's the real risk, Bill, if they crack down on the Internet. I mean, I, when I founded Scholars, I mean, it, it, it's a virtual society. We exist because we can communicate through the exactly, Internet. Exactly, exactly. We'll take a pause in the action and come right back with my guest, Jim Fitzer. Don't go away. Get ready to call in, 513-381-3838, right here in the side zone. I'm Bill Bocher. Come right back. Back in the size zone, Bill Boshears, my guest tonight, Jim Fitzer. Uh, by the way, guys in the control room, do you guys have that, um, that clip we took uh, off of uh, that? Do you have that clip ready? All right, we'll play that in just a minute here. Jim, we got a clip off of your uh, D, uh, VHS that we're going to yeah. play here in a second. Jim, if people want this, uh, it's on DVD now, is it not? Right, I'm putting it on DVD, Bill, that's right. Okay. Uh, how can they get that? They, 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 can, they can write me to Assassination Research at 800 Violet Lane, Oregon, 
Wisconsin 53575. Just enclose a check for $20. Mention whether you want VHS or DVD, and okay. that includes shipping and handling. All right. Let's go right back to the phone. Let's go to Mike. You're there, sir. Go ahead. Hello, Mike. Hello. Hi. I just wanted to bring up the fact that there was a book written about the Harvey Oswald before the Kennedy assassination. It's called The, the Idol Warriors, and it's really out of, hard to get in. It's out of print. It was written by his combat buddy while they were stationed in Japan. I never heard of it. Well, there was, there was a book written about Oswald by a, a, a fellow named Kerry Thornley, who appears to have been connected to the CIA. It seems like a really odd thing to do to write a book about this guy before he's committed the assassination, but Thornley apparently did that. Uh, he, did he know something that we didn't know? That I think he knew something we don't know. There yet. you go. Hey, uh, Mike, I appreciate the call, sir. Thank you. No problem. The number uh, 513-381-3838. Uh, gentlemen, would you mind running that uh, tape for me? Have you got it there, Handy? They're going up with it right now. Back with Dr. Charles Crenshaw and asked him if he had ever made diagrams of his observations in trauma room number one that day. Much to my surprise, he reported that he had not. So in October of 1993, at my request, he made diagrams of his observations as follow. Here is his diagram of the throat wound. Notice it's a very small wound and has the characteristics of a wound of entrance. He also diagrammed the wound after the tracheotomy performed by Dr. Perry observed it's a very small wound with a very straight, clean incision, indicative of the high quality work that Dr. Perry performed. Here's a side view of the president's head showing a major defect to the back of his skull. Uh, this, this defect uh, is located at the place where you'd rest your head in a bathtub if you were reclining in a tub. And here, in this fourth diagram, you can see a description of its approximate size. Dr. Crenshaw characterized this wound as approximately the size of a, of a baseball, by which he means a hard ball, or, in other words, approximately the same circumference as that of your fist when you double it up. You know, Jim, I, I'm looking at your book here, and that's, is that in the, I was looking at one of the books here, and the color yeah. pictures that you've got in here, I've never seen. Yeah, it's in, it's in, it's in murder. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, the detail with which I had never seen the front, the top view of his head. Yeah, anywhere. we know about 95% of what there is to know about the case, Bill. It's in those three books, I'll just tell you. It's amazing Man, it, how it, much it, we've been it, able to figure you out. You know, what I, I, and I pointed this out last week, it is so surprising that our schools are not trained to, to teach history like this. It is, if you have a family library and your children are going to school, I'm going to tell you, you will not get this stuff online. If you don't have these books, you need it to put in your family library for research, if nothing else. And that's very important because we're nobody's doing it today. Moving right back, let's go to Mink. Mink, you're on the line with uh, Jim Fitzer. Go ahead. How you doing, Bill? And uh, hi, Jim, again. Pleasure. Uh, got a question. Go ahead. Uh, on the shell casings or the, the bullets themselves that were taken at the autopsy, um, have you... Uh, looked at the riflings uh, to match uh, those bullets? Good question. Well, uh, you know, the, the, there were several lead slugs that were taken out of the body at Bethesda, and uh, Dennis David, who was the chief administrative assistant NCO there, typed it up. We actually had him undergo hypnosis, and he could remember every keystroke. But I don't know that those lead slugs have, have surfaced. So far as I know, they're missing. Now, the claim was All that right. there were some fragments that were found in the limousine that were supposed to have, have matched, and the claim was made that that was... Uh, proof that Lee Oswald had committed the assassination, but even though if those were Mandlicker Carcano bullets, that would only show, in fact, it wouldn't even prove they were fired from a Mandlicker Carcano, much less who had fired them, because it appears that a Mandlicker Carcano bullet was fired from a larger caliber weapon from the top of the county records building, 
by Harry Weatherford, who was a deputy sheriff who was stationed wow. there using a Sabbath casing. It's like a little collar you can put over the, the round to enable you to fire it from a larger caliber weapon. And, and such a casing was, in fact, in recent years found in the top of the county records building. And, you know, this case still remains open. You guys keep on it. Good show, guys. Hey, appreciate so it. Thank you, sir. 45 years and not one president has even approached it. Not one. It's people like Jim Fitzer and his group that are documenting and taking a look at it. Quickly, uh, the, this will be the last one here. M is it Michael or Ma Mark? Who, who I got here? Michael. Michael, go ahead, sir. Yes. Is there any proof that um, Kennedy is still living, that uh, the bullet didn't kill him, but it left him uh, oh, no. a little bit incapacitated? No, there, there's no evidence of that at all. In fact, he had a, a third to a half his brains blown out in Dealey Plaza. He was actually dead on that, the spot instantly. The yeah, but that could be a cover up. He had maybe, no maybe. discoloration of the which means he was killed instantly. Uh, you know, cover-ups are nice things, and I've, I've heard it all. Anyway, Jim, we're at the bottom of the hour. I've got to run. I'm up against this thing here. Uh, the, the three books, uh, Assassination Science, Murder in Daily Plaza, Zabruder Film Hoax, all available on Amazon.com. That's right. Plus, there's the 9-11 conspiracy if you want to turn in that direction, too. Absolutely. And by the way, go to the website. Give them the, what is it, 9-11? 9-11scholars.org. That'll give you an insight to what these guys are doing out of their own pocket. We'll take a pause in the action. Jim, thank you for being here. I'll speak with you soon. Let's do this again. Terrific, Bill. Thanks so much. You got it, my friend. Have a great one. Be you safe. too. Be safe. Bye. That was Jim Fitzer. I'm Bill Boshears. Let's take a pause in the action. We'll come right back. I got a whole bunch of stuff I want to get through to you tonight. Back in the size zone, Bill Bosch here is with you till 12 o'clock. Uh, this past week, I sit like many of you did, and I watched the hearings of General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler begging for money. Oh, no, we're going to use it for this, for that, for the other, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. Here's what General Motors plans to do. By the way, I got this from the Latin American Herald Tribune with me. General Motors plans to invest $1 billion in Brazil to avoid the kind of problems the U.S. automobile is facing in its home market, said the beleaguered car manufacturer. According to the president of GM, Brasilia uh, Motor Car Company, or whatever they call it, the funding will come from a package of financial aid the manufacturers will receive from the U.S. government and will be used to complete the renovation of line and products up to 2012. So General Motors was going to take a billion dollars and go to South Latin America with it, taking your money. Now let me give you some stuff. You don't have to take my word for this. This is all out there. Applying a little banking knowledge experience, and I want to hear what you think about this. 381 3838. Do we let them go broke, pick them up at the end, do something with them, or forget about them, let them go on, and uh, either they make it or they break it? What the hell? I don't care, one way or the other. Let's see if I understand what's going on there, with this money that they're just handing out. And then I, got a, I think I got a solution for it. There's little, if any, due diligence on this in advance of the giveaway. No independent audits. No appraisals of private assets. Limited to non-existent documentation accompanying the giveaway. Few, if any, restrictions on how the public money is going to be used. No voting control over anything. Uh, little collateralization has even been offered in protection for the loan. No personal guarantees. Uh, by the private management or shareholders or anybody else. No enforcement of what few uh, written loans they might have. No assurance of public money will be used, uh, as I've just pointed out, for what it was authorized for. Little, if any, direct help for the distressed homeowners. And I'm coming back to that. No charge into bankruptcy laws. No change anyway. No serious efforts uh, in prevention of bonuses 
or huge salaries to be chopped or limited, no serious effects at the prevention uh, of the public money being used for private companies, no uh, investigation of what went wrong or who's responsible, little no regulation or uh, reinstitution of uh, a conservative with a small c in there, and no uh, removal of those individuals in government or private company whose decision ultimately led to this, no prosecution or punishment for anybody, no tracking of whether the methods were successful, and no re uh, reporting uh, to or receiving permission from Congress before the Treasury chooses to do this, and no disclosure of who uh, receives the public funds, how much or why. And then you hear, well, we're going down to Brazil, and we're going to modernize the lines down there so that we won't have the problems we've got here. You worthless, no-count bunch of hypocrites. You don't deserve the money. My question to you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, do you want to bail these people out? Or would you rather have them go bankrupt and we pick it up? Oh, well, if they go bankrupt, Bill, it'll be a trickle-down thing. Now get excited to me, folks. Don't you feel your heart rushing and pounding? The people who make the seats, the speedometers, and all the add-on luxury things, oh, there'll be thousands of people out of work and, oh, 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 oh what are we going to do? The sky will fall. Let her fall. Here's the deal. Go to bankruptcy when it comes out. Tell us what you need. I got a better idea. <coughs> Work with me on this a little bit. You're sitting there at home tonight facing a depression like I am and the general and the engineers. Everybody in the United States is facing a depression unlike the 30s. It's going to be worse. Today's depression has been caused by 40 years of this money, a terrorist-inspired deregulation. And, and I blamed it all on the derivatives. Uh, the derivatives were illegal from 1936 until Reagan got in. He legalized them in 82. Wendy Graham, Greenspan, Bob Rubin, and Larry Summers teamed up to start a derivative bubble during the Clinton years. And Clinton went along with it. Clinton's a dummy. He's just big stooge. Now there are, now listen to this. This is mind-boggling. 1.5 quadrillion, quadrillion dollars in derivatives. Ladies and gentlemen, it's worldwide. It's not just going to hit here. The depression is going to hit the whole world. But we know who did it, but they're not being held accountable. And what we've been doing with this banking system, the Federal Reserve caused the first one, it's caused this one. They're at the basis of this. Here's what happened. The Federal Reserve didn't put any oversight on any of these derivatives. None of the home loans, none of that. They just stood back, well, okay, sort of directed traffic, you know, nothing. Here's the other part. You and I are going to have to pick up the pieces. We can't pick the pieces up. Hell, we haven't got that kind of money. Our children's 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 children are going under. What you may see, and you're hearing it first right here, is a one world currency. That's right. The, the whole world is broke. I'll come right back with more. Don't go away. Jump in. 513-381-3830. I want to hear what you think about this. Good evening. Bill Bush here is back with you till the remaining part of the show here. By the way, the reason I'm so hyped on these derivatives, they're not uh, derivatives, not subprime mortgages, are the reason for today's crisis. I've been saying that for years. Uh, today's depression also comes from the privatization, like the privatization of Fannie Mae, which worked fine for 30 years. Uh, HUD, you may remember the lady who was here, Austin uh, 
Catherine Austin Fitz caught, caught them moving $59 million out of there when she was secretary of it, back under George Bush number one. She lost her job over it because she asked too many questions. George Bush is as crooked as anybody ever has been. This is all, this is all here. This is not my making this up. This is history. Now, instead of giving money to General Motors, Ford, Chrysler, AIG, all the rest of them, why not take that $700 billion that they want? By the way, AIG is back for its third time. Why don't we take that money, and Obama, you need to hear this, because it wouldn't happen until you become president, but here's what would happen, and this is how fast you could correct this country and all the problems that's in it. Instead of giving the money to the corporations, see, the, the banks that got the money, you haven't heard jack squat out of it. You can't show me anybody that got a loan out of a bank that's got the money. They put it in their damn pocket. Oh, yeah, it goes right in the pocket, and we'll have a party someplace, and uh, I'll get my retirement out of it. And the, and the public at large can go to hell is exactly what's happening. And here's the other part. Why not take that $700 billion and take everybody above the age of 21 in this country only who has a checking account and give to that person $100,000? You say, oh, Bill, oh, God, we couldn't do that. Think about it for a moment. Where are you gonna, you're not going to walk around with $100,000 in your pocket. The money's going to be put in their banking account. The banks would become solvent instantly, instantly. They would pay off their house and the mortgages. They would either buy cars and start the economy. Talk about a jump start for an economy. Jesus, Lord Almighty, what do you want? Now, if you give it to General Motors, you'll never hear from it. They'll be back. You'll never get your money back. If you give it to AIG, I guarantee you'll never get it back. Within seven days, in the second week, the money will be back into circulation. First off, I'm going to pay taxes on $100,000. Do I think? I think it should be tax-free so that the money is going into society. See, you, when you spend money into society, it levels the playing field. Everything, everybody gets ready. Everybody participates. Everybody's involved with it. Now I've got a reason to be in America. Now, now, is it going to happen to everybody? No. You're not going to give it to everybody. You're going to give it to people who are responsible enough to take care of Well, who's that going to be? That's the person who's paying taxes. That's a person who has a bank account. That's a person who's going to college. That's a person who's got debt. You're clearing it up. And the money is staying here in society, in the banking system, not loaning it to the Fed, and then we sell the bonds to our good old boys over at Goldman Sachs, and they sell it out, and... We make a debt on it, and then we pay it to London through the Fed, and the Fed takes, collects the taxes and pays the, uh, the Rothschilds their cut for having a banking. The banking system caused this, and you're going to give them money? Somebody, there's something wrong with this picture, folks. Maybe I'm a nitwit, but it makes damn good sense to me. If you gave the money to the public where the problem is, you would do away with the depression. Well, if I get you to repair roads, fine. Put whatever you're thinking on you want. You want me to work in the street? You want me to work somewhere? Fine, pay me. Put that money in the hands of the public. For God's sakes, don't give it to corporate America. We're already in problems with those morons. It, listen, if corporate America had kept up with the technology that's available, they wouldn't be in this problem. They're, they're, we got people at GM, Chrysler, and Ford making millions of dollars a year, and they got this problem? Hell, I could run a company better than they do for a hell of a lot less. And I can prove it. See, you got me started again. Diane, you're on the air. Hello, Bill. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Everything you just said, I had this same conversation with a group of people yesterday, but we said fifty thousand dollars a piece. Fifty? Hell, give them a hundred thousand. You yeah. won't even touch a, a seven hundred billion. 
but everybody is jumping on this bandwagon as far as being bailed out, and all of us are fed up about it. But I had one client stand up and say, excuse me, Bill, I've got a cold. But I had one client say, you know something, Diane? I pay my mortgage every month on time. They're not going to help me in any way. Hell no. But I'm thinking about not paying my house payment for three months so I could throw my home in foreclosure so I can get a 2% loan. And I'm like, see, that's the problem. See, that's, Everybody is jumping on this bandwagon, and everybody is fed up about it. But see, if everybody, and if Obama would come out and say, look, we're not giving corporate America jack squat. Yeah. This is going to Americans helping Americans. By the way, it's our money anyway. That's right. And we will be paying on, and like you said, our great-grandchildren will be paying this debt for the rest of their entire lives. And you know what kills me is all the Japanese car dealers that are here in this country. Making great. They're not suffering. They're not suffering. They're, they're just thriving. Their employees are thriving the whole nine yards. The well, I job suggest, loss in, in the I United see, States, we are in a depression. I, I, and the, nobody wants to wake up for it. Hell, I've been saying that for months. Uh, the idea is let them go bankrupt. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Let AIG fold its tent up and go to hell. Yeah. I don't care. All oh, the, Bill, you don't understand what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. Yeah, well, anybody that can earn anywhere from 42 to $100 million a year, there is nobody worth that kind of money. Hell no. And it's like, how dare you stand there and you... Go on your cruises. See, I think I think America is mad as hell about this. All of us are. We and, are fuming. And it's about time we started right here. Especially, I mean, the average person, we can't even afford to, to go to the grocery store and plan for a great holiday. I mean, because of all of us are broke. And it's I'm, like the gas prices are down. Why is it everything else? Well, <laughs> Isn't that interesting, those gas prices came down? Well, you know, I, it's, it's unbelievable. If all of us really knew the truth... I try to give it to you every I, week. I don't know what America would do if we really... A lot of times I stand back and I go, I thank God that I'm ignorant on a lot of things because I really don't want to know. Good friend of mine keeps saying, don't tell me I don't want to know. I yeah, just don't exactly. want to know. Well, you have a great night, Bill. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate the call. Thank okay. you, dear. Bye-bye. Robin, you're on the air with Bill. Good evening, Bill. Uh, I, I think you're right on the money because, uh, number one, I don't look for conspiracies behind every bush, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, I, I think that all of this financial situation was planned a long time ago. A lot of things led up to it. Forty years they've been planning this crap. That's right. They started with Kennedy. That's why I'm doing this show. Well, furthermore, your idea about $100,000 to each uh, citizen, uh, adult citizen, I think it would be a fantastic idea because, number one, if we're in debt, we pay off our bills. That's money back into the company. It goes into back the into banks, the system everything else. right and now. And the, the thing is that then after we get out of debt and pay those loans off to the companies, give them money to loan out more, we would have money to spend. Hello, it's a no-brainer. It really is. It's a no-brainer, and I don't understand why our elected officials... Have you heard anybody else say this? No. Why don't? Why not? Because they big corporates run in the media, and media don't want you to know this. That's why. That's I right. appreciate the call, Robin. Thank you, dear. Good night, Bill. Good night. Uh, let's go. First off, let me finish this. Do you want me to take a break now? Let's take a pause in the action. I got some more for you, and we'll come right back. Quickly, quickly, don't stay out there long. Hurry back. I've got about three minutes left. I'm going to take the phone calls. I've got on the line here. People have been standing by the longest. I'll finish this. We're going to th I'm not done with this. I am not done with this by any stretch of imagination. We've got answers, and we can get this thing back. Let's quickly go to Robert. You've got about a minute or less. Go ahead. Hey, good evening, Phil. How you doing? Doing well, sir. Quickly, go ahead. Hey, hey uh, Bill, in uh, 1959, 
when Fidel Castro took over Cuba yeah. and nationalized all the banks and all that kind of stuff. What did they call that? Communism, nationalization. They yeah. nationalized Is that their... what we're uh, going through right now? Because it sure seems like that. That's where we're headed. That They haven't called it that. I mean, very kind of astute, of, Robert. That's it, very it, astute it, of you. It, it's kind of ironic that... It's led under a Republican administration at that, Bill. If, since George Bush Sr., right. Ronald Reagan well, it's, it's, Sr. It's part of the New World Order. You got it, brother. I appreciate That's what it. I was just I, thinking. I got it. Thank you. Let's go to Ron quickly. Ron, you're on the air. Bill, is there any way that we could, as private citizens, litigate for crimes against humanity and bring this money at 300000 Per American citizen, which would be a lot less than seven hundred billion. Yes, absolutely. We could demand it of Barack Obama. We can demand it by our Congress, by our senators, if we all decide to do it at one time. You can't do it me by myself or you by yourself. But yes, we can do it, and I appreciate it, Con. You're thinking, Ron. That's the way it is. Thank you, sir. Let's go to Norm. Norm, you're there, sir. Quickly. Bill, yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds all well and good to give all the adults $100,000, but that's money that's borrowed from the federal government. Who has to pay it back? We do. Well, it's our money to start with. Hell, they're making a loan. Why not give it to the people that's going to have to pay it back? It's and if you don't want it, just give it back. It's going gonna, it's gonna to end up in the same thing. In other words, we're still going to end up owing that money. Well, then don't take it is my point. That's my whole point. You're going to take it. I'm going to take it because I, it spins it back. It clears up the depression and all of Detroit's problems, all the bank's problems. But why give it to a company that's going to stick it in its pocket and not give it back? Hell, you can't show me a bank already that hasn't been, uh, uh, they're keeping the money. They're not loaning it back to people. Ron, I pre then, Norm, well, hold Norm. it. One thing, your taxes is going to triple. Your t taxes will triple no, because you, you can pay stop the money that back. You can stop that before you give the money out. Anyway, i got to run, Norm. I appreciate your call. Join me next week, please. I'm Bill Boshears. I'll be here next week. We're going to cover this because this is not something that's going to go away. We're facing a depression unlike any other time in history. It's going to be worse than the other one. I hope not. Maybe we can change it. You and everybody around you. Take care. Stay safe. But join me here next week. Have a good week.